Welcome to the Church at South Edmonton's podcast. We hope you are encouraged and inspired to seek Christ through the message today. Heavenly Father, thank you, God. You have conquered it all. I'll praise you, Jesus. We love you so much, Lord God. You are our champion, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. When we speak your name, when we speak it out, we love you so much, Lord Jesus. Oh, we love you, God. You know, this week's been a crazy week. been amazing. You know, our dear mother, you know, she um, fought the good fight. You know, she finished the race. And you know what's so awesome? She made it to heaven. She's in heaven now. We're just so excited because she ended well. She was faithful to the end. Hallelujah. And she had a hope. And the hope. She's there now. Hallelujah. And you know what? It's just so awesome because God had something for me to share, but it had to all change this week because I want to share this hope with you guys and what God has for you. Because you know what? When, I was, when we were in that room, you look around and, you know, there's... When they're there, you know that's the end. They're not going anywhere else. And then it got me thinking, I'm going, man, if they don't have that hope, how is it out there without the hope? But you know what? Our, our mother had the hope. She knew. And she was faithful to the end. She fought the good fight. We were so good. Because, you know, in this world, there's so many things that bring us down. And there's so many distractions. And we get so discouraged but this life is so short. And you know, you really realize it when your kids get really old. <laughs> and you realize how short it really is. And, and even now, since we're grandparents, it's like, wow, we got adults for kids and got a grandparent now. And I still feel like way back, you know, 40 years ago, I think it was. And time goes by like this. And this is just a little part. There's all of eternity. And you know what? I want to share with you guys about all of eternity. And it's like, this God is so good. And you know what? Oh, man. This is, I'm just so filled. What a great, you guys did such a great job. You know? So exciting. And it got me so in, pumped up. Because you know what? He's never lost a battle. Amen? And Savon, if you can just stay up there and just play a little. Because I don't know where God's going to take this. It's going to be amazing. I just love what God does. And, and you know what? I'm, I'm just so thankful for my brothers and sisters here. Amen. And I'm so thankful I get to share God's word and what God has and what God has for you. And even for you online. Thank you so much for listening and staying in tune. And you know, there's a guy out there. The Lord just hit me. His name is Scott. And you're listening to this. And I got a great message for you. You know, today's message is called God is for us. And God is for you. And God is for you too. There's God. You know what? God will meet you wherever you're at. Amen. You know, I was really, I was, we were sitting here worshiping, and God goes, you know what? Meet you where you're at. And what was so cool was that thief on the cross, you know, he was in no service. Nowhere else. He was actually dying on the cross. And God met him and said, today you will be with me in paradise. Amen? Amen. God will meet you no matter where you're at. Because he loves you. God is for you. Until we come to that realization, we can't grasp it. But like, I like what they're saying, you know, he's never lost a battle. He's already won. Amen? You know what? He battled for our lives, and he pleads for us. And I'm telling you, when you call on his name, you got it. He's never lost a battle. God is for you. Today, I want to speak about God is for us. And, um, and I said, you know, I had the title God is for us, but God is for you. And I want you to yell out, God is for me. He is for you. You're here for a reason. You're not here because you just dropped by. God is calling each one of you right now. 
And he's not going to let go of you. The only person who will let God let go of you is you. So please listen to this, my brothers and sisters here. This is so important because, man, God loves you so much. You have no idea. Even, you know, we have kids and our grandkids, kid, now. And you see how much you love your kids. And if your grandparents, your grandkids. God loves us even more than we can even love our own people. And it's so hard to even grasp that. And I want you to keep this in your mind. God is for you. Okay, today we're going to read from Romans 8, 31 to 39. And I think it's up there. But God is, if not, I'm going to read it slow. We're going to, it's, we're going to grasp it because this is so cool. What shall we say about such wonderful things as these? God is for us. Who can ever be against us? Amen? And if you're listening online, who can ever be against us? Since he did not spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all, won't he also give us everything else? Amen? You know, and then I thought about Abraham. Okay, Abraham, God spared Isaac, Abraham's son. Amen? God didn't spare his own son. He did such a great thing. So, do you think he's going to do great things in your life? He's going to do great things in life, in your life. Amen? He loves you. God is for you. We need to accept that, declare it into our own lives. I love, and I'll keep going on. Who dares accuse us whom God has chosen for his own? Amen? He's chosen you. No one, for God himself has given us the right standing with himself. Whom then will condemn us? I love this. No one. For Christ Jesus died for us and raised to life for us. And he is sitting in the place of honor at God's right hand, pleading for us. Amen? And right now, even you're listening online, he's pleading for you. God is for you. He loves you so much. I'm so glad you guys are here because you know what? We're going to leave today changed. I'm so excited. This, it's just, I want you guys to be set free. God wants you to be set free. He wants you to live a victorious life because God is for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I love this. Can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean he no longer loves us? If, he, if we have trouble or calamity or are persecuted or hungry or um, distributed or danger or threatened with death? No. As the scripture says, for your sake we are killed every day. We are being slaughtered like sheep. No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loves us. Amen? Hallelujah. He loves you. He has a plan for you. Love it. And I'm convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death nor life. Wow. Neither angels nor demons. Neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. I love it. Wow. No power in the sky above or in the earth below indeed. Nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, you know, I was um, looking into it, and God is for, if God is for us, and I love the way uh, Paul writes, right? This ain't no, um, um, you know, hypocritical scenario or nothing, or suggested idea or theory. As sure as we know, the sun will rise tomorrow and will set today, God is for us. He wasn't thinking, it wasn't a theory or nothing. But it was sure reality, guys. Okay? 
until we get that into our minds and into our hearts, that sure reality that God really is for us. This will summarize the gospel and serve as a, a, a theory here, suggestion. And um, when Paul was speaking, he got rid of all the super, you know, the superficial, the elaboration, any suggestions. It was just the real deal. He didn't make it up. And he didn't exaggerate. You know, what's so good? Paul gets to the point that God gave him. You know, he left no room for any misunderstanding. When God says he is for you, God is for you. Amen. Hallelujah. In 2 Corinthians 3.18, so all of us who have had that veil removed can see and reflect the glory of the Lord. And the Lord, who is a spirit, makes us more and more like him as we are changed into his glorious image. Hallelujah. He's changing you right now. Amen. Hey, this is what the word says. So it's not even, I'm not even just saying this out of, you know, what I'm thinking. It's all in the word. And then I love this. I fear no danger, for you are with me. Psalms 23, 4. This I know, God is for me. Psalms 56, 9. Who is against us? The opposition of this world sometimes feels big. Sometimes, um, you know, there's heartache, there's depression, there's um, letdowns, and there's attacks and everything. But God is for you. That stuff isn't going to go away. But when we realize, okay, this is really good, that God is for us in every step we take, and just accept what's happening and know that God's hands in our lives, he's going to look after you. He said it. And like I said, even as Abraham, right? Abraham was permitted to save his son. Hallelujah. And God didn't. What a merciful God. Because he knew what had to happen. And he had to do that for all of us in life to live a godly life and have an everlasting life. You know, we've always faced the hardship and persecution and all that. Psalms 44, such things... It says, will such things separate us from the love of Christ? No. We are more than victorious, not by our own abilities, but because God loves us. Amen? He loves you so much. Sorry, I got to use notes because I'm ADD and my head goes all over the place. And this kind of, it's pretty good because I'm actually keeping track of things. So I love it. Love it, love it, love it. And... Um, you know, this week, I was thinking about, um, you guys know what Kinder Surprises are, right? We all love them. You know, and, and whether you like the chocolate or not, what's awesome is what's inside. Amen? <laughs> and you know what? When you peel everything back and you look and you get excited to what's inside, that's how our lives are. Amen? You know what? God has a cool surprise inside of each one of us that he wants to come out and birth something. Right? And that surprise is always so good. And, and you know what else in there which I also like, which is actually so cool? Are you ready for this? I always need this. There's instructions. Amen? You know what? Like, the Word of God here, there's instructions for our lives. How to put it together and make it amazing. You know, and you know, our kids have always loved the surprises. I think they're just so amazing, and um, I don't know why I brought these up here. I was thinking maybe I'll eat them, but just, you know, to keep me, you know, to keep me going, right? Or I don't know, or, you know, if somebody's falling asleep, I might just throw it at you or something. Not sure. We got a, I got, like, two bags for some reason, but as you know me, I love chocolates, of course, and I had to get a Kinder Surprise here, so, and not the eggs, because, you know... Everybody would be fighting for the eggs, right? But you just never know. Here you go, Jesse. Yeah, see? 
There you go. And who knows? Maybe there'll be more surprises as we're going. And I don't know why, you know, throwing about. I think they're just amazing because we get so happy when you have chocolate. Amen. But um, I want to just go. Sorry. There's a little sidetrack there. I want to go back to Paul. You know, Paul grants persuasion. Me, you know, meaning he held complete assurance. Is in the perfect tense, which includes, you know, the, the actions and the impact. Having per- persuaded by God, he stood firm in the belief that nothing could separate him from the love of God. Amen. Jesus conquered death and Satan on the cross, ensuring that nothing can change God's love for our purpose, for us. We are being protected by God's power, amen, through faith for a salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last times. 1 Peter 1.5, I love this. And through your faith, God is protecting you by the power until you receive his salvation, this salvation, which is ready to be revealed on the last day for all to see. Amen. He's keeping you. He loves you guys, man. I want to encourage you guys. God is for you. We need to know in our hearts that God is for us. Amen. And in our minds. And we need to be transformed By the renewal of our minds. That God loves you. Hallelujah. In 1 Timothy 1.15, he goes, This is a trustworthy saying. Everyone should accept it. Christ Jesus came into this world to save sinners. And I am the worst of them. So no matter what you say, Oh, you know what? I've done so many bad things. Hey, Paul has done a lot of bad things. But that's why he came for you. That's why God is for you. Amen. Hallelujah. And he goes on. But God had mercy on me so that Christ Jesus could use me as a prime example of his great patience with even the worst sinners. Then others will realize that they too can believe in him and receive eternal life. All honor and glory to God forever and ever. He is the eternal king. The unseen one who never dies. He alone is God. Amen? Amen. That's what it says. It's written in the word, you guys. I'm not making this up. So I got a lot of scripture here. And if you guys need some, you can always let me know and I can send them to you. But um, just like I was saying, he's going to meet you where you're at. Like he met the thief on the cross. Like what a weird place to meet. They were both dying. And, and, and the funny thing is, what's so cool is Jesus didn't ask what he did wrong or nothing. Didn't say, oh, you did this and that and that. And the thief didn't even say, I did this, this and that. The thief just knew in his heart he needed change. And he goes, remember me. And I'm telling you right now, you guys, call out to God. We're going to be um, partaking in the Lord's Supper today. You know, at the end. And you know what? As we remember him, right, let's even ask for our own lives to remember me, oh God. Amen? He loves you so much. You know, I just can't get over it. And even, you know, the reality hits, like I said, with our dear mother. But yet, she's with him. (laughs) It's reality. We are all appointed to die once. And wouldn't it be great? It's going to be awesome when you know your heart, you're assured how much God loves you and that you love him. You know, I I love it when people say, oh, if we have a good God, why is he going to send? Why does he send people to hell? He doesn't send anybody to hell. We send ourselves. We're the ones who choose whether or whether or not we accept him and say, God, remember me. Amen. Like even when you're standing, you know, at the judgment throne and he goes, God, you know, I, I did this and this for you. And he goes, I never knew you. <laughs> My prayer has always been, God, I pray you know me in a good way. I want to be known by God. God is for me and God is for you. 
Hallelujah. Second Corinthians 17, 5.17, it says, This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. Amen? And I know a lot of us were speaking, you guys, we're, a lot of us are Christians here, and we've been Christians for a long time. But you know what? We still got to renew our minds and our hearts daily. We got to examine ourselves. We got to know that God is for us. And that nothing in this world, or even in, in the depth anywhere, that can be against us. Hallelujah. And all of this is a gift from God who brought us back to himself through Christ. And God has given us his task of reconciliation, re reconciling people to him. Amen. And 19 goes, For God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself. No longer counting people's sin against them. Amen. And he gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation. He's not going to count your sins against you. He throws them as far as from the east as from the west. And east and west never meet, you guys. He forgets. I'm so thankful that God forgives. Because a lot of us, we don't forget. And you know what? I'm thankful I'm not God. In 2 Corinthians 5.20, this really hit me hard, you guys. Okay? <laughs> it goes... So we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. Amen? Through you, through me. We speak for Christ when we plead. Okay? God is pleading. Are you ready? Come back to God. He's pleading for you. Come back to God. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter where you've been. It doesn't matter even our thoughts, right? Our thoughts, will, um, our thoughts will break us so many times. But God is pleading for you. Come back to Christ. Amen. Let's change. And then um, 2 Corinthians, and it still goes on. For God made Christ, who never sinned, to be an offering for our sin. Amen. So that we could be made right with God through Christ. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 6.1 goes, As God's partners, we beg you not to accept this marvelous gift of God's kindness and then ignore it. Amen? So he's saying that, you know what? If you've tasted God's stuff, don't ignore it. It's so important. God is for you. God has a plan for you. God loves you so much. And at just the right time, well, for God says, sorry, it keeps going. At just the right time, I heard you on the day of salvation. I helped you. Indeed, the right time is now. Today is the day of salvation. Amen. Today is the day to change our hearts. Today is the day to change our minds. And I'm even speaking about me too. We got to know that God is for you. God loves you beyond any measure. Hallelujah, Lord. Romans 8, 1, right? It goes, so now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. Amen. If your mind condemns you, if your heart condemns you, this world may condemn you, but you know what? It's more inside of us. It's a spiritual battle. And we got to stand up firm with what he says in his word. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Amen. God is for you. Amen. Hallelujah. You got to keep saying God is for me. Because God is for me. God is for you. He died. He gave his only son. He came down here. To become a person. But wait, I'll get to that. And two, and he goes, because you belong to him, the power of the life-given spirit has freed you from the power of sin and that leads to death. Amen? You're free. And we got to, it's, it's in the word. And we need to believe this. Because God is for us. And, um, and here's what's so cool. Romans 8, 
has been called the most wonderful chapter of the Bible. It begins with no condemnation, right? And I love this. And it ends with no separation from God. Amen? (laughs) Oh, man, that's so good. There's no condemnation and no separation. Amen? You cannot be separated from God unless you decide you want that. Hallelujah. Wow, that's so good. I just love it. There is no condemnation for the believers because he is, we are not under the law. And we have been released from the law. So now we can serve God in a new way of the Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. Sin is no longer our master. For you no longer live under the requirements of the law. Instead, you live under freedom of God's grace. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to, there we go. I'm doing pretty good. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. (laughs) Holy Spirit, like even with a mind like mine, Holy Spirit will still keep it under control. Hallelujah. And in 7, 6, it goes, but now we have been released from the law, for we died to it, and we no longer are captive to its power. Now we can serve God, not in the old way of obeying the letter of the law, but in a new way of living in the Spirit. Hallelujah. The believer's freedom comes from Jesus. The incarnation, his work as a sin offering by the Holy Spirit, operation providing life. The second person of the Trinity, the Son, took on humanity. He did not cease to be God, but he took on the real human nature, amen, without sin, and became the perfect offering. Hallelujah. He filled the law's demand and his life and in his spirit death and broke sin's law, the power in the human body on the cross. Amen. Now we can live a new life, a new way of love. Love is a fulfillment of the law that we can live freely in keeping the Spirit. In Romans 3.13, it says, 10, love does, not, does no wrong to others. So love fulfills the requirements of the law. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. And then in 13, 11, he goes, this is all the more urgent for you to know how late it is. Time is running out. Wake up, for our salvation is near now than when, it first, when you first believed. Amen. Coming like this. Hallelujah. And because we belong to the day, we must live decent lives for all to see. Don't participate in, drunk, in darkness and wild parties, drunkenness, or sexual persecu- uh, promiscuous and immoral living, or in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, I love this. Ready? Close yourself with the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. And don't let yourself think about ways to indulge in your evil desires. Let's put on Christ. Hallelujah. Let's clothe ourselves. Let's take off the old stuff. It's easy. You know what? Time to, you know, throw it away. Like we've had some old clothes. They got dirtied and everything else. And, um, you know, you had to throw them out because you couldn't do them more. Wear them anymore. And you had to wear some new clothes. Holy Spirit's giving you new clothes. You don't have to walk around in that anymore. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And, um, and, I, and, I, and I was thinking about it. I love this. Right now, as Christians, we live kind of in two realms, right? In the old age and in the new age that's coming. And it's, it's just so cool because, you know what? I have in my notes here, it goes, 
we long for the new age full, fully to come, and we recognize that our salvation will soon be completed. We have been rescued, amen, from the dominion of darkness. And I'm just going to read that in Colossians 1.13. For he has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son who purchased our freedom and, forgive, and forgave our sins. Amen. So this is what he wants us to do. We need to wake up from spiritual sluggishness, slowness, dullness. And Paul used this image as taking off our clothes and sinful behavior and putting on the Lord Jesus Christ as our way of life. Amen. And that's where he goes, Paul 5, he goes, Paul describes two kinds of people, the old man and the new, two different kinds of existence or two mindsets. The outcome of the two ways is thinking, our example, death versus life and peace. Amen? Hallelujah, Jesus. God is for you. And right now, you know, I just want to pray for you guys right now, too. I don't want to bombard you with too much scripture and all that. God has a simple plan. It's a simple message, amen? God is for you. And um, you know what? Before we even take the emblems, I just want, you know what? God is saying inside that I feel that, you know what? I have a prayer team here. And Caitlin, if you can come up too. And that's my daughter there. And you know what? We want to pray for you right now. If you feel that, you know what? You need to know that assurance in your heart that God is for you. You want to live a victorious life? You will. You want to be freed? And a lot of it is inside our heads. Because you know what? We defeat ourselves. And God is saying right now that, you know what? I want to set you free. I died for you. He paid the ultimate price. And I'm not even saying, you know, I, even if you have Jesus and you've accepted him. But there's a part where we need to believe and accept that God is for us. We can't be defeated. We can't live that defeated life. And... And that song we sang, never lost the battle. God has never lost the battle. God is for you. He battled for you. So he's already won. And that's whether you're sick, whether in our minds, right? Because he can do all things. But fail. <laughs> that's so good. He can do all things but fail. Hallelujah. So right now, we're going to pray. I want to leave the altars open. Because God has something for you. God wants you to live a victorious life. Amen. Heavenly Father, right now, Lord, I pray for my brothers and sisters, God. Lord, we pray that you just set them free, Lord, from the bondage of this world, Lord God, from the bondage of inside. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, oh God, as you said. But Lord, the things that attack us in our heads, the things that stop us think that you are for us. And so many times we think that, you know, yeah, God is for that person and that person. But no, God is for you. God is for me. God, right now I pray you set your people free, my brothers and sisters here. Hallelujah. I love them so much, oh God. And I want them to have the fulfillment 
everything you have for them, oh God. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So right now, the altars are open. Come on up. If you need prayer for healing, healing in our heads, because God has something for you. Amen. God loves you so much. That's unreal. You want to be delivered? You will be delivered. I promise you. Praise you, Jesus. If you can um, sing, um, build our lives. Amen. Because you know what? We need to build our lives. And the altars are open. I don't want to waste this time. This is so important. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Thank you, God. Hallelujah, Lord. God wants to set his people free. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. We praise you, God. Life. Yes, God. Amen. A firm foundation I will build my trust. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. The altars are open. Come on up. I promise you it's going to be amazing. You can live a life fulfilled. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. I will be mad. Yes, God. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. And I will not hang in hold. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Upon your love, it is a prayer. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Praise you, God. Praise you, God. I will not be ashamed. I will Hallelujah, Lord God. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Surround me. I will build. Amen. Praise you, Jesus. Upon your life. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Ah. Amen. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. And we love you, God. All right, if we can take our emblems. And he goes, For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Amen. And, remember, and when we take this bread, remember what God, what Jesus has done for us. Hallelujah. And I love the word says, do it together as a body. And... Um, I'm just so thankful that we can do this after thousands of years, 2,000 years, and we're still remembering it, and we're honoring what happened at the cross. Hallelujah. So when we do this, we don't take it for granted. It's such a serious thing. Remember what he did for you, because God is for you. Amen. So let's share in the bread. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And in the same way, also he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink in remembrance of me. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, we remember you, O oh God. Thank you for shedding your blood for us, Lord. Hallelujah. Let's just. If you could just. Um... Thank you, Jesus. God, we thank you for all you've done for us, Lord Jesus. Lord, we take nothing for granted. God, we remember you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. Thank you, God. God, for you are for us, Lord. Who can be against us? Lord, you came here to be one of us. Hallelujah, Lord. Without sin. And you took on our sin. You took on the sin of the world, Lord. We thank you, God. Lord, I give you my life, Lord Jesus. If we can all stand up and say, Lord God, I give you my life. Hallelujah. And we'll sing, I build my life on you, Lord God. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Lord Jesus, I give you my life, O oh God. I love you, Lord. Amen. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, God. Holy, there is nothing like you, Lord God. No one. Lord, we build our lives upon you, Lord God. I pray you take my brothers and sisters, and Lord, you keep them for all the days of their lives, Lord God. May they have that hope, Lord Jesus the hope of eternity, eternal life with you, Lord. That it's amazing. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord God. And holy, there is no one like you, O God. Holy, there is life. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. We thank you, God. We thank you for today, Lord. And the altars are still open if you need prayer. And um, we love to end the service. We just want to declare this over you. So if you want to hold your hands out. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. Amen. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. And may he put his name in your heart. Amen. Hallelujah. You are free to go. I do have some chocolates here too for the kids. But um, yeah, the altars are still open. So God bless you guys. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. If you enjoyed this week's message, click subscribe. And if you'd like to check us out in person, 
check our website for times and location at thechurchsc.com. Have a great week.